Y'all want to keep voting for Biden and keep voting for the likes of Biden. Go ahead, man. This is what we going to get. Right now, inflation is so bad. All of our favorite businesses are going out of business. Oh, my gosh. Person for Rubio says it's becoming increasingly more challenging to keep up with rising costs. And it comes as devastating news for many St. Diegans who have seen the restaurant expand over the years. I'm bummed that they're closing. Uh, I go there at least once a week. Since 1983, Rubio's Coastal Grill has grown to be a San Diego favorite. We eat there for like at UCSD when we went to, there for college all the time. Local and it has restaurant. a nice story to it, too, how it began as a tiny place, know, you know, huh? and it expanded. The casual dining restaurant began as a walk-up taco stand in Mission Bay and has expanded throughout the decades to hundreds of stores across the U.S. You got to start with a soft corn tortilla. Then you need a little white sauce on the deep fried fish. CBS 8 has covered the restaurant several times over the years, including in 1997. We really want to expand coast to coast. Smoky Oaxacan shrimp tacos. This is our cilantro lime quinoa bowl, which is one of my favorites. In 2019, co-founder Ralph Rubio sat down with CBS 8's Jeff Zevely about what inspired him to open up the restaurant famous for its fish tacos. My first fish taco experience in Baja was in San Felipe, which is on the Sea of Cortez. In 2020, we covered the challenges the restaurant faced during the pandemic when it filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy and was forced to close 26 locations. At the time, the restaurant said the restructuring plan was to create long-term financial stability. Fast forward to today, the store announced it closed a total of 48 underperforming locations across the state, including 13 in San Diego. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of businesses are going through the same problems. You know, we're overtaxed, we're overburdened, and gasoline's higher here than, you know, everything in San Diego is more than anywhere else. I don't know. I mean, there's San Diego staple. In a statement, a spokesperson for Rubio's told CBS 8 the decision to close stores is never an easy one and that the closings were brought about by the rising cost of doing business in California. They add that while painful, the store closures are a necessary step in their strategic long-term plan. It's sad to see that it's a quality, good company that can't keep all of their Rubio's open. You know, it's unfortunate fortunate that uh, everything's too expensive in California. The company says there are 86 stores that will remain open in California, Arizona, and Nevada. For a full list of the 13 San Diego area store closures, go to cbsa.com and click on the story. Biodynamics, huh? Biodynamics. You wonder why they don't use that term no more. At one point, they were trying to campaign on it. Biodynamics this, Biodynamics that. But, you know, we started looking around. It was like, you know what? We're going to take, take that one back. You know, we're we going to go back to the drawing board. What are you going to call it? Lionomics? That's really what we should have called it. Because this is what's happening all across the states right now. First of all, businesses can't do business when you taxing them for everything that they got in addition to that you know don't go, let's not forget the left wants to increase wages not realizing that overhead increases and so much more uh but yeah man biden is squeezing everything he can out of the american people with these biden policies they're they're definitely destroying uh the republic uh, Republic's constitutional framework. I think I, that's the best way to phrase it. Um, but yeah, this is really sad. And Rubio isn't the only one. This business isn't the only one being affected. So many businesses, big and small, are being affected by this. Can somebody explain to me in crayon eating terms why I make over three times the federal minimum wage and I cannot afford to live? And I do not want to hear the pull yourself up from your bootstraps, work 90 hours a week. That's not the goal, guys. That's not. That should not be our standard. I'm so, I am so f***ing tired of people being complacent with this uniparty, both of them f***ing us over. I, when my parents were my age, they both made less than half of what I make and they lived alone. I cannot afford to live anywhere alone a one-bedroom apartment eighteen hundred dollars two-bedroom apartment twenty two hundred dollars who the fuck can afford that it is embarrassing to come out and say that it is a struggle to survive right now but i know so many people are struggling and do not get me started on what my grandparents were doing they 
$3,000 house. And yes, I understand inflation and all of the bullshit that they have been pulling with the Fed. Why are we allowing it? Why? And then I clock out of my shift. I am tired. I have to go home. And I check the news. Another 60 fucking billion to a country nobody can point out on a map. <sighs> what are we doing? Why? Where has the plot gone? We have lost it, folks. We have lost it. The American dream is dead. It is over. Gone and forgotten. Man, sadly, we all feel this young man's pain. That's why we got to make sure we do what we do come November to make sure we replace whom. Um, you know what? Biden isn't there because they actually voted for him. They voted against Trump. Let me just say it. Let's just go and call it what it is. But this is very true, bro. The fact that he said, look, I make more than my parents made not even half of what I make separately. And they were able to afford to live on their own. Today, Tom's dog, like interest rates are in this. Uh, this economy is absolutely terrible. And I'm. <sighs> I'm super sick of this, man. That's why we gotta stop voting blue. I'm trying to tell y'all, you know, we got we we get Trump up in that thing. We end this nightmare of money going to everyone but the American people. This is this money is being floated around to everybody except us, and I don't get it. Like my Wendy's chicken sandwich and fries and drink was freaking twenty dollars, bro. That's too much. But Americans are not struggling to make ends meet because they're. Buying too many Snicker bars, we don't talk about that. They're struggling because we have the worst, most incompetent, most corrupt president in the history of our country without, without question. Great. One of the most vicious effects of the Biden inflation tax is how Crooked Joe has made it impossible for millions of Americans, especially young Americans, to buy a home, a car, or even hmm. make their rent. You know, uh, young Americans are getting out of high school and getting out of college, and it's a disaster for them. They've never had anything like it. They've never had anything like it. High inflation means that high prices, high interest rates, high mortgage rates, and death for the American dream. It really is. It's death. Definitely death to the American dream. I mean, it's one thing to just sit back and go, you know what, I'm just gonna work really hard and make a whole lot of money. But it's like, yo, you gotta make three times a lot of money in order for you to make a little money in today's economy. And he's only, Biden it is, gonna continue to drain us more and more and more and more and more. You know, with all these taxes and, you know, all of these fundings of wars and, Unnecessary funding to illegals, billions of dollars. Man, Bidenomics, Biden's policies have caused 3% inflation for 38 straight months. And this is the longest period since the 80s. This is why most of us Americas, Americans, I'm sorry, feel poor. I really doubt that we're going to see an inflationary cycle that will have a temporary or transitory impact. The faster than expected increase in some of those prices is actually a good sign. The overwhelming consensus is going to pop up a little bit and then go back down. No one's talking about this great, great deal. This is something that will uh, settle down. Transitory. <laughs> transitory. <laughs> Most of the price increases we've seen are were expected and expected to be temporary. It's un highly unlikely that it's going to be long-term inflation that's going to get out of hand. I don't know anybody who's worried about inflation. Over the last couple of months, uh, we actually saw it trended downward. President Biden's chief of staff, Ron Klain, enthusiastically retweeted an economist who had said in part, most of the economic problems we're facing, inflation, supply chains, etc., are high class problems. Well, the number one thing that the president can do is help get COVID under control. Uh, that we know is the root cause of inflation. President Biden this afternoon saying he thinks we're at the peak of the crisis right now and that lower prices are on the way. The inflation has everything to do with the supply chain. Make no mistake, inflation is largely the fault of Putin. If you want to get rid of inflation, the only way to do it is to um, re undo a lot of the Trump tax cuts. Our inflation rates are lower than other nations in the world. The inflation we're seeing is due to the pandemic. When inflation hit a new high last week, the administration and President Biden called the numbers out of date. I just want to say a number, zero. 
Today, we received news that our economy had 0% inflation. When I hear people talk about inflation, as I heard them there, we have to change that subject. Inflation is a global phenomenon. All I'm going to tell y'all is this. Y'all put that man back in that office again. This is only going to continue to get worse. Only going to continue to get worse. Shut up, body. Uh, It's only going to continue to get worse. We have to make a change. And the only way we're going to make that change is honestly by no more blue right now. Okay. Until we see something change in the future. No, 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 dog. Bidenomics policies are ruining us, crippling us. And this man want to sit here in our face and zero. (laughs) <laughs> That's the number I want to bring to your attention today. Zero. Huh. You know what word I want to bring to your attention today? Jail. I got another word. Oh, um, here goes a sentence. You ain't the president no more. Huh. A few word choices for you. <laughs>